Across the Goal Line, a sports podcast, with your host, the Encyclopedia of Sports, Luke Austin. You can find Across the Goal Line at ATGL16 on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and be sure to subscribe on YouTube. If you are placing an order for merchandise, please email Across the Goal Line 2016 at gmail.com. Links to all those sites are in the description below. Without further ado, here's your host, Luke Austin. Week 7 of the 2017 college football season just wrapped up the other day, and we had a lot of upsets. I will get into those uh, here in a second. I actually had four of the top ten teams go down, so I'll get to that here in a second, like I said. Um, As you can tell, um, got a... Fresh start, uh, new uh, new music, uh, new intro, and I'm looking forward to uh, doing this this way from here on out. Uh, as I said before, it's just me doing across the goal line now. I am your host, Luke Austin. Um, we'll only be talking football and wrestling, college football in the NFL, and professional wrestling. Um, so this video, it's week 8 college football predictions. I'll recap week 7 and then preview the next week, which is week 8 this upcoming weekend. Uh, got another great slate of uh, college football games, uh, starting on Thursday night with Memphis and Houston. Houston, excuse me. And then um, Tennessee and Alabama Saturday afternoon. And then wrapping up with Michigan and Penn State on Saturday night on ABC. I will be at that game. I will be at College Game Day Saturday morning, so keep an eye out for me. Uh, I will have a sign. I don't know what it's going to say yet, but I will have a sign. Uh, I'm sure I will be posting it on social media right before College Game Day goes live. Uh, At least that's my plan at the moment. Um, So keep an eye out for that. Uh, My Twitter and Instagram, uh, since that's not in the intro, uh, is my Twitter is at CoolHandLuke96, and then my Instagram is LGoddessArt96. Uh, so follow me on there. Uh, to make sure you uh, stay up to date. And then, you know, um, follow at ATGL16 if you haven't already as well. Uh, so stay up to date, uh, you know, with my posts and whatnot, especially this weekend. Like I said, I'll have a sign. I don't know what it's going to say yet, but I will have a sign for College Game Day as College Game Day returns to Happy Valley for the first time in nine years. Um, eight years, excuse me. They were here in 2009. I was actually at that College Game Day between Iowa and uh, Penn State. Um, so just give me a follow if you haven't already. And then uh, I'll be sure to post post the picture of my sign so you guys can uh, keep an eye out for it. And then if you see it, you'll be like, oh, well, that's Luke from across the goal line. So, um, as I said, another great slate. But uh, we had a good slate this past weekend. As I said, four of the top ten teams went down. Uh, so it was, it was upset weekend. Uh, you know, we've... At least I've, you know, a lot of people, I should say, have uh, assumed and knew Upset Weekend was going to be uh, coming in college football. They just didn't know when. You know, we've had some close games in the past couple weeks, and, you know, uh, the ranked team ended up pulling away, you know, late and picked up the win. But uh, this past weekend, um, and all these... Uh, games I'm about ready to talk about are on my list for biggest upset this past weekend. Uh, two of them were on Friday night, and then two of them were on Saturday. Uh, the first one, Friday night, um, was Syracuse and Clemson. Syracuse went up, I mean, Syracuse hosted Clemson and defeated uh, the Tigers. Uh, Cal hosted Washington State and uh, took them. Uh, out behind the shed and literally killed them. Um, LSU defeated Auburn. Uh, Auburn has not won in Death Valley since 1999. Uh, And then Arizona State defeated Washington on Saturday night, late Saturday night. Um, 
so like I said, you know, upset weekend. It's 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 been in the process of getting here, and it finally did. Uh, with four of the top ten teams going down, Clemson was number two. Uh, Auburn was ten. Washington was, I think, six, and Washington State was eight. Um, but now, now those teams have fallen in the latest AP Top 25 poll. Uh, Clemson, I think, out of uh, those four teams, <coughs> would have the best chance to get back um, into the playoff uh, pitcher. Um, you know, playing in the ACC, more people watch football on the East Coast than the West Coast. Um, you know, so Washington, Washington State. I'm sorry, no one really watches Pac-12 football. I do, but not a lot of people do. Um, but out of those four teams, and you got Auburn sitting there as well, but they still got to play Alabama. And Alabama, it looks like they're unstoppable right now. And you know, who knows? They might uh, might win out and you know go to the national championship and you know win it this year, unlike they did last year, but. Um, we'll have to see. There is a lot of football left to be played, uh, so you just got to let the games play out. But as I said, big, big weekend this past weekend in college football. Upset weekend. Four of the top ten teams went down, and we'll, we'll have to see how this upcoming weekend plays out. Because, like I said, we got a another great slate of games. You know, with. Uh, Oklahoma State, Texas, um, uh, Central Florida and Navy, USC, Notre Dame, um, you know, some more games I'll get into uh, here in a bit, uh, but I, I do want to, you know, recap some of the other games that I picked. Um, actually, I didn't even pick uh, the two games on Friday night that were upsets, and I only picked uh, one of the two. Um, yeah, I picked one of the two on Saturday, and that was that was LSU and Auburn. So three of those four upsets I didn't even pick, um, and I was I was pretty happy of how I did this past week. I went nine and five, unlike the week before, I went six and six. Um, so um, the past couple of weeks I've been upping the uh, games. I've been um, the total of number of games I've been uh, choosing from. You know, last week I picked 12, this week I picked 14. This upcoming week I know I have 15 games to choose from, so um, we'll, we'll have to see if I can get my record for the year um, uh, better than what it is now. I think at the moment I'm sitting around uh, 65 or 70 wins. Uh, all I know right now though is I went 9-5 and five this past week. Like I said, I was happy. And right now, I'm just going to run through the games that I picked. South Carolina defeated Tennessee 15 to nine. West Virginia defeated Texas Tech 46 to 35. The Mountaineers scored 29 unanswered uh, and defeated the Red Raiders at home. Michigan uh, had to uh, beat ha- had to have overtime to beat Indiana 27 to 20. LSU, as I said, defeated then ranked top 10. Uh, then ranked 10th Auburn, 27 to 23. Oklahoma defeated Texas in the Red River rivalry, 29-24. Wisconsin defeated Purdue at home, uh, 17 to 9. Miami, Florida defeated Georgia Tech on a game-winning field goal, 25 to 24. Memphis defeated Navy by three, 30 to 27. Texas A&M defeated Florida by two, down in the swamp, 19 to 17. Ohio State then went on the road and demolished the Nebraska Cornhuskers uh, by a score of 56 to 14. Um, Mike Riley, we'll have to see if he's there at the end of the year. Uh, USC defeated Utah by one after Utah decided to go for two and win the game. Um, but USC pulled out 28 to 27. Michigan State then defeated Minnesota on the road uh, in Minneapolis 30 to 27. Boise State upset San Diego State 31-14. I say an upset because Boise State was unranked and San Diego State was ranked. Stanford defeated Oregon then 49-7. I didn't have the Boise State-San Diego State game in my biggest upset because 
biggest upset is a big upset for those all four of those games those four top 10 teams lost so um, San Diego State who I think uh, I believe was ranked uh, 19th or 20th when they uh, played Boise State this past Saturday night um, best game then I didn't think um, I have none written down on my notes I didn't think there was one there was a lot of close games though but none that I would consider to be a good game from start to finish you know we did have like I said a lot of close games you know late but um, I, I wanted I wanted to uh, say there was a, a good game from from start to finish uh, team that impressed me would have been California defeating Washington State at home um, this really helps USC because USC uh, defeated Cal on the road a couple weeks ago uh, and then you know they had lost to Washington State then uh, the following week and then Washington State just loses to Cal so you know you got a little uh, circle there between the between the three teams and USC is sitting pretty right now uh, for the Pac-12 with Washington State losing to Cal, who USC has already defeated. So, um, and then on the flip side of that, for disappointed, it have to be Washington State. You know, they picked up a big win against USC at home um, a couple weeks ago, and and then they lose to Cal, who USC beat. So, it doesn't help. It doesn't help the Cougs out at all. So. Uh, Cal impressed me, and then Washington State disappointed. I could say Clemson disappointed, and Auburn disappointed, and Washington disappointed as well. But uh, the most disappointing team this past weekend, uh, for long term wise, um, especially for the playoff for playoff implications, would have to be Washington State. Games this weekend, then uh, we got I got one game to pick uh, on Thursday night between Memphis and Houston. I want to take Memphis in that one, and then the rest of the games. Um, the rest of the games are on Saturday, October the 21st, uh, starting with Iowa State and Texas Tech. Texas Tech comes back home after a loss to West Virginia on the road. Uh, after, like I said, giving up 29 unanswered, they really should have won that game. Uh, Iowa State, two weeks removed from defeating Oklahoma on the road. Uh, Texas Tech, I think, is going to pick up the win in this one. Oklahoma State goes to Texas in a game I said uh, back uh, back in August. These two teams I thought would meet for the Big 12 title, but Texas is sitting at 3-3 three and three at the moment. Oklahoma State has that one loss to TCU. Um, you know, I think I think Texas wins uh, against Oklahoma State, and you know, shakes some more things up in the Big 12. Um, and I think if Texas, I think TCU would really like Tex would really want Texas to win. They should be rooting for the Longhorns on Saturday because, you know, if they uh, if Texas does beat Oklahoma State, all TCU is going to have to do then is uh, defeat Texas and win out and then they win the Big 12. Um, they will have to play the second the, ta the second best team in the league for obviously the Big 12 title because the Big 12 championship game is coming back this year. But uh, I, think, I think a lot of people get the gist of what I'm trying to say. Maryland then goes to Wisconsin in a Big, big 10 matchup. Um, Wisconsin uh, coming off a win against Purdue. Uh, this past uh, this past weekend by a score of 17 to nine, Maryland they lost to Northwestern at home, who absolutely well they, I shouldn't say they got crushed by Penn State the week before that, but uh, they lost pretty bad, um, and they they had Penn State right where they wanted them, but Penn State you know they went back into their form of being a second half team from last year and uh, um, just you know defense. Defense stopped them um, more than uh, how do I want to how do I want to say this? Uh, Penn State's defense really held down the fort and pick, really picked up the win for the Nittany Lions over Northwestern the week before. But then Maryland loses to Northwestern, and now they got to go on the road to Wisconsin. 
uh, I don't like their chances. I gotta take uh, I gotta take the Badgers. Louisville then goes to Florida State. Both these teams are having their worst seasons of recent memory. Uh, Florida State sitting at two and three, and Louisville's at four and three. I think uh, Louisville, I know, is coming off a loss to Boston College at home. Boston College just picked up their first conference win since November of 2014. Um, pretty impressive uh, for them to go down to Louisville, uh, defeat um, defeat uh, uh, reigning Heisman Trophy winner and Lamar Jackson who really has cooled off, I think, in the past couple weeks, uh, especially especially with this loss to Boston College by three. It was a high-scoring game, 45-42, but um, now they got to go to Florida State. I don't think Louisville really has anything to play for. You know, we saw what happened with Rick Pitino back, uh, back in September, losing a basketball coach, university losing a basketball coach. They might be losing their football coach. There's a little connection between, you know, these three teams that I'm talking about. Third, I'll get to here in a second. Louisville just played Boston College at home. Boston College is my next game I'm going to pick. They go to Charlottesville to play Virginia. And then Tennessee is that third team. They go to Tuscaloosa to play Alabama. A lot of people are saying Butch Jones is going to get fired uh, down in Knoxville. I've been hearing uh, some rumors as well. Uh, Tennessee is going to go after Bobby Petrino, and Bobby Petrino would go back to the SEC then um, and coach for his second SEC school. We all saw what happened uh, when he was in Fayetteville with Arkansas, and and then he ended up coming back to Louisville, really getting back on track. And do I think he'd, you know, turn on them again? It's hard to tell. Um, if the money's right, he leaves, but as of now, I think he stays. Um, back to the game, though, Florida State, like I said, I don't think Louisville really has anything to play for. I think Florida State's going to win. Boston College, and as I said, there is a little connection between those three teams. Boston College, and goes to Virginia, uh, to Charlottesville. Virginia, surprisingly, sitting at 5-1. and one up a win this week. They're bowl eligible for the first time since I don't know when because it's been forever. Uh, I think Virginia does win, gets a 6-1, and one, and becomes bowl eligible for the first time since, like I said, I can't remember when because Virginia has Virginia football has been bad uh, for the past number of years. Tennessee then goes to Alabama. Roll Tide. There's nothing more to say. They're going to crush Tennessee. Absolutely crush them. If Butch Jones is not fired after this game, you know there there's something wrong. Uh, I don't know why. <clears throat> Especially if they'd get blown out, why do you hold on to him for the rest of the year when you can fire him, uh, name an interim head coach, <clears throat> and move forward with him? And then if you like him, he's already got a couple games underneath his belt as an interim. If he hasn't already been a head coach in the past. And then, if you like, like I said, if you like him so much, you hire him. You stay in program and you hire him. Um, but we'll have to see. Uh, we'll have to see what happens during the game first. Uh, I have Alabama big. I could see this game being close, so it normally is. But I have I have the Crimson Tide in a big win. Indiana then goes to Michigan State. Um, Michigan State they're sitting at five and one. You know, very, very, very surprising to a lot of people. And they're a quiet 5-1. and one. But that one loss they have is to Notre Dame, who is ranked in the top 15. So that's a good loss. Um, Indiana came off, you know, a close loss to Michigan. They had Michigan right where they wanted them. And they just they couldn't stop the run. They gave up 200 yards. On 25 carries and two touchdowns uh, to Michigan's a running back. Um, LJ Scott really turned it around last week for Michigan State for the first time uh, in about a year and a half. Really hasn't been running the ball a whole lot, very well, a whole lot lately. Um, but last week um, against Minnesota, 
he uh, he got back to um, he got back to you know where he left off and where a lot of people um, know what type of runner he is. Um, so I think Indiana, they'll have some trouble with Michigan State, especially going on the road. They had Michigan at home last week, so they go on the road now to Michigan State. Michigan State will win. Syracuse then coming off that big win against Clemson has to go to Miami, Florida, who defeated George Tech on a game-winning field goal. I got the Canes. Central Florida then goes to Navy. Central Florida, they're averaging about 48 points a game. Uh, very shocking to a lot of people as well. Navy coming off their first loss to Memphis last week by three on the road and a close one. Uh, I think this game will be close. I think it would be a shootout. If Central Florida can stop the triple option, um, they'll win. If not, Navy's going to win, but I, I got Central Florida over Navy. Uh, USC Southern Cal goes to Notre Dame, goes to South Bend to play Notre Dame, 7.30 on NBC. Saturday night, um, fight on, I can never pick, uh, never, ever pick Notre Dame, I don't care who they're playing, um, as much as I hate USC, USC's playing Notre Dame, so, fight on, go Trojans, um, I can never pick Notre Dame, so, USC over Notre Dame, Wake Forest then goes to Georgia Tech, I gotta take the Yellow Jackets, Wyoming goes to Boise State. Boise State's coming off that big win against San Diego State. I gotta take the Broncos. Fresno State goes to San Diego State. Speak of the devil. Um, San Diego State, I think, will rebound, pick up the win over Fresno State. And then the game of the week, in my opinion, um, college game day will be there. We'll be here in Happy Valley, I should say. Uh, between Michigan and Penn State. Uh, it's going to be a whiteout, 7.30 kick on ABC. Uh, I could see the attendance record being broken. Uh, they'd have to get close to 111,000 to break that record. I think it can be done. Like I said earlier, I will be at the game. I will be at college game day, so keep an eye out. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I can pick Michigan ever. Um, no, I've I've picked Michigan in the past. Michigan's a good team. They were in a slump. Um, I think they're still in it somewhat. You know, uh, I think it started started with that loss to Michigan State. They just didn't play well, and then they were still hung over a little bit. Uh, last week against Indiana, like I said, they had to go to overtime to beat the Hoosiers, uh, who Penn State, uh, you know, Indiana is that common opponent between these two teams. Penn State defeated them back on September 30th, 45-14. to Michigan just beat them on the road 27-20 to in overtime. So, you know, if that's, you know, going to predict the winner, Penn State's obviously going to win. Both these teams' defenses are uh, pretty stout, pretty phenomenal. Um, I think it. I think it's going to be a really, really good game. I think it's going to be low scoring. I say Penn State wins by a score of 17 to 13. Uh, John O'Corn. I think he'll you know make the same mistakes he did um, against uh, Michigan State two weeks ago. A lot of people probably don't know, John O'Corn is originally from Huntington, Pennsylvania, which is about less than an hour away from University Park. Um, He moved to Florida uh, his ninth grade year, um, went to IMG Academy, ended up going to Houston, transfers to Michigan, obviously. Um, And uh, now, really, probably the biggest game of his career, uh, you know, coming back home, playing his hometown team, Penn State. It's it's going to be a big game for him. Hopefully, hopefully his emotions don't get the best of him. But you know, I think they will. Like I said, I think he'll 
he'll make some mistakes like he did late in the Michigan State game. And I think Penn State's defense will hold on. Saquon Barkley will probably have another good game. Uh, I could see uh, Michigan go into that Northwestern tape a couple weeks ago trying to stop them. Don Brown's one of the best defensive coordinators in the country uh, for Michigan. You know, I give him credit for that. Um, you know, Michigan's going to have a plan. Jim Jim Harbaugh and Don Brown, they'll have a plan. Uh, Tim Drevno as well, the offensive coordinator. But coming to Penn State, um, night game, whiteout, college game day is going to be there for the first time in eight years. Um, I, there's no way I can pick against Penn State and the Penn State Nittany Lions. Uh, so I got I got to take Penn State over Michigan uh, on Saturday night. Like I said, I'll be there. Um, so hopefully, uh, hopefully I get most of these games right this week. As I said, I went nine and five last week, and I'm getting my record back to where I wanted or where I need. Yeah, where it needs to be, where I wanted at. Uh, as I said, I'm probably about 65, 70 wins last time I checked, but uh, that's least of my concerns at the moment. Um, all I'm hoping for is a Penn State victory uh, on Saturday night. And uh, be sure to keep an eye out for NFL Week 7 predictions and WWE TLC predictions.